Hi, welcome to Grandparents Teach 2, Learning Through the Seasons. Are you one of the 37% of grandparents helping out with their grandchildren, maybe three times a week, or maybe you're raising grandchildren? Well, um, we have a group called Grandparents Teach 2, and what we try to do is to help grandparents reduce stress of childcare and give them some ideas to help children prepare for uh, school. And today we're going to take a look at uh, a way to get them involved in science. You know, children are natural scientists, at least according to the National Science Foundation. They're great observers, they ask questions, they like to draw to report things. They uh, also like to um, do some experiments, and if something doesn't work quite right, try something else. So they try to predict, and they're just natural scientists. So what we can do is to nurture that. And all you need is a little science kit. Just go through your kitchen drawers or down your basement, your garage, and get some of these materials. And you can nurture the love of science. We also write a, um, a series of articles and called Grandparents Teach Too, and you might want to check that out or go to wnmufm.org for podcasts and you'll get the same sort of thing. So what you need is some kind of a container. I just had a lot of these uh, around, so I grabbed one. And you can also, if you want to not use a bag, you can just use a container. If it's cracked, that's just fine. Put some duct tape around it. And then you um, need some kind of magnifying glass. This is a cute one I picked up at um, St. Vincent de Paul. But uh, if you have the kind of thing that you put over your uh, books as you, as you read, it magnifies. This also is a ruler. You're going to need a ruler to measure different science things, different animals like ants and earthworms and leaves and all these things. And uh, if you can, dig up a, a net, some kind of a net or a strainer in case you want to pick something up. Warn children not to pick up insects because they do sting, especially ants. They're, they love ants and, and that's what you need a spoon for out of your cupboard. And to dig around, maybe look for some uh, roly polies. Uh, something underneath the log, you can just use a fork, that's no problem, just stick it in there. Some kind of a container to hold things, things for a little while. Uh, you don't want to keep things, they die anyway, so you know, just put it in a container to look at it, and to draw, and to talk about it. Um, you might want to throw a couple uh, markers in there, or crayons, the kind of crayons that don't melt, or just a a very fat pencil or a regular pencil, whatever you have around the house. And uh, maybe a little scoop. I use my uh, measuring cup for that. And then, if you really are gung-ho about doing this, you might go to the library and there are so many books that tell you about what it is the children find. Because they're going to have lots of questions. If you like using the internet, you can always um, do that too. The whole idea behind all of this is to build up three million words before um, your child goes to school because then those three million words will help that your child become a great reader. So three million words and you also want to make sure that they hear those three million words and, and through conversation. So one thing that you can do is to remember to put some kind of a notebook inside so that you can draw together an ant or an earthworm, a leaf, a twig, whatever you found, and then talk about it. Talk about where it lives, what it eats, and if you don't know, look it up. Look it up together in a book or um, on, on uh, the internet. And, Google is great, other ones are fine too, and you'll get the information. So, happy exploring the neighborhood. You don't have to go any place really, just walk around the yard, explore the neighborhood. So, behind the camera is Fran Darling, and I'm Iris Caters of Grandparents Teach Too, and kids are natural scientists, let's help them be them.